The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and welcome to our ACM SIGUX webinar. My name is Lori Fox and I'm the chair of SIGUX. Today we are talking all about the SIGUX 2018 conference coming up in just over a week. I have just a little bit of information to share with you before we um, turn it over to today's presenters. First thing I want to say is everyone is muted and the session is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel uh, early next week. If you have any questions, um, you can put questions in the question window. There's also a chat feature. And if everyone could just say hello to me so I'm sure that I'm broadcasting, that would make me feel comfortable. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Byron. Following directions. Good job. So I have a few things that I want to share with you about SIGUX. The first thing that I'm very excited about is we just recently announced our award winners for 2018. And we will be presenting them at the conference. So on Tuesday of the conference, you will be attending a general session. And we will confer um, the awards to our winners. We have the Penny Crane Award for Distinguished Service and a Hall of Fame Award, award for which we have four um, recipients this year. We also are going to see our Communication Award winners. And we have two opportunities um, to celebrate those award winners. We will present them at the Tuesday general session, but also many of them are going to be attending the conference and um, will be at the poster session. Uh, the conference, I will see you there. Um, it starts on October 7th. Also, um, most of you who are attending the conference probably joined SIGUX for the conference discount, um, but there are other benefits to being a member of SIGUX too. Um, you can have access to the ACM Digital Library where um, all of our conference proceedings, the papers that our presenters write are um, published. And our papers were just published this week for SIGX 2018. So you can head over to the digital library and take a look at the papers. Um, sometimes I like to look at them before the presentation so I can kind of get a good idea what the presentation's about. We're also going to be kicking off um, applications for our 2019 mentoring program after the conference. So you'll hear some more about the mentoring program excuse me, at the conference, and then um, be able to join up if you're interested. Oops, went backwards. You can also stay in touch with SIGUX. Make sure you're on the email listserv. Um, you can find our email listserv on our website, directions of how to sign up. We also have a Facebook community and a Twitter account that you can follow. So I'm going to turn over the presentation to Lisa Brown and Robert Bishop. They are um, going to talk with you in detail about the conference. Lisa, I'm giving you control now. Okay, are you seeing my, which screen are you seeing? Now I'm seeing your desktop. Okay, so I need to move my PowerPoint over there. Let's make sure this works. Yep. If I no, it, it's, over here. And it's only presenting on the other screen. How do I make it present here? <clears throat> so under the show button, Lisa, <laughs> you can choose just to show your, um, oh, I see it now. Sigus, We're good. Ready for We're good. Start. Okay, I'm going to mute myself. Take okay, away, thanks, Lisa Lori. And Robert. So welcome everyone. Um, my name is Lisa Brown and I have been attending SIGUX uh, on and off since 1997. Um, so I am not necessarily a newcomer anymore. Um, I also want, go ahead Robert and introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Robert Bishop. I have been coming to SIGUX 
uh, from way back in 2016. Uh, so I've only been coming for two years. So, so we've joined up together to sort of give you an introduction to SIGUX and prepare you for blast off next next week or 10 days from now. Um, we're real excited to um, to have you joining us and uh, learning more about what SIGUX is. So, um, there. Um, so we've got sort of three goals uh, for today's web webinar. The first one is to give you an overview of the organization. Uh, the second one is to tell you a little bit about the conference and what you might expect from it. And the third one is to talk about networking um, because personally as someone who's come, been coming to the conference since 1997, um, that is the part of the conference that I uh, love the most. Uh, that this That's the reason I keep coming back. That's the reason I uh, have so many friends across the country and it's really what makes SIGX valuable to me. And so we're hoping that you'll feel the same and uh, you'll understand why once you see what we're, we're share with you. So I wanna start out with what is SIGX? Um, there are a lot, of, a lot of letters that make up a, word, a funny word, um, but to start, we are part of an organization called ACM, which stands for the Association for Computing Machinery. It is one of the oldest computing organizations in the country. Um, it's also an international, uh, has international representation across the world. And it is um, it is a larger parent organization. This part of our name stands for special interest group. So ACM consists of over 30, almost 40 special interest groups in various areas of computing. And so ours, the UX part, the UCCS, uh, those letters stand for University and College Computing Services. Um, we have been around for over 50 years, and that was the name that um, our founding fathers gave to us in the days when uh, computing was, a, the start of computing on campuses came about. And so university and college, to represent our various organizations uh, and different types of higher ed institutions, and computing services. Um, we're probably thinking that we're probably all more than that now because of how much uh, technology has changed over the past 50 years, but that is that is what we are and that is what we stand for. So the conference, uh, this is our 46th annual conference and there's a long history of conferences and formats for the conference, um, but every year from about the fifth year of its inception, this group has been holding a conference and bringing together um, IT professionals who work in higher ed for both professional development and networking opportunities. And so um, we're hoping that that's why you're here and that's why you've decided to come to SIGUX and that that is what you're hoping to get out of the conference. Um, but that's that's our goal as an organization is to, to bring people that work in higher ed in information technology uh, together um, to, to meet each other, to share ideas, and to also help each, each of us grow individually. So the conference is made up of um, different types of sessions you might go to. And this year with the outer space theme, um, they're calling them missions. We've called them other things in the past, but this year they're missions. And the conference has six different types of content you might be interested in going to. There's a set of uh, sessions that will be based on customer service and IT service management. There'll be a set of sessions on instructional technology. There'll be sessions on lab management and desktop support, uh, infrastructure and strategic planning, training documentation and engagement, and leadership and career development. Um, these, these missions evolve with the times. These are the missions that this year's conference committee came up with and decided on. Um, and as I said, if you went back 10 years and looked at the, the tracks that were, uh, were talked about, some of these might have been the same, but they might have been called help desk and student services or um, uh, management track or something like that. So as the times change and as our services change, we, we change the focuses of these to hopefully keep people engaged and keep them coming back. But as you look at different sessions, um, think about which of these make the most sense to you and which ones that you would you want to attend and um, look for the type the type of sessions that fit your your mission at your university 
The other thing you should know is that we have four different types of sessions. So any of those missions could have uh, presentations, which are talks like this, where there'll be PowerPoint slides and someone talking about their project or the way they, they did something at their university. But some of them may be facilitated discussions. And that's where the leader or leaders will engage the audience in trying to solve a problem together or um, come be, do a more of a workshop style presentation. So there might be some presentation, but there might be some audience participation as well. We also offer sessions that are panel presentations, which means that people from multiple schools will be presenting and you get multiple viewpoints. And the fourth type of session you might see are our lightning talks. Um, these came about just in the last few years and they are seven minute talks. Someone gets up and talks about a topic for seven minutes and we try, we squeeze four or five of them in a single hour so that you get lots of little bits of information all at once. And other conferences I've been to call these different things. Um, I think I've seen them called rocket talks. I've seen them, which would have been appropriate this year. Um, uh, uh, I think they're also sometimes called Pikachu's or something like that uh, when they're given in industry. Uh, but we've been calling them lightning talks, and I, you know, encourage you to attend them and see what they what you think of them. Uh, next up, how do I know what's being offered? Uh, if you haven't had a chance to look uh, online, the schedule of each of the sessions is up uh, both on the web and in the SCED app. So you can go on your phone or your iPad and download the app, create an account, and then uh, load the SIGOX conference for 2018 into the app and mark the sessions you want to attend. Now, one thing that I will share with you is I often mark multiple sessions. And I do that so that it reminds me which ones I was most interested in because my interest may change from today to the day of. Um, Sometimes I mark a bunch of things that are very similar to each other. And then after I've gone to three that are all very similar, I go, oh, I need something different. I need to stop listening to this about help desk and go to something, something just a little different. So that's where marking something else, so you have two options at any given time, might make a sense to you. Um, the other thing you might want to do is look for sessions from institutions similar to yours. So when you look at the authors, um, if you're from a really large public school and you see a school, another large public school presenting, even if it's not a topic you're interested in, you might learn something from how they handle a situation or how they handle a project that they have to communicate out to big groups of customers. Versus if you're in a small institution, you may learn something from how another institution did a project that maybe you're not going to do the same thing, but how they handled um, change management or something like that might be important to you. Um, so thinking about not just the topic that's most pertinent to you in your life and your day to day activities, but also the kinds of other topics that you can bring back to your organization um, in terms of how people did things at school similar to me. What else can you do to get ready? Um, I know Lori mentioned this at the beginning, um, but if you are not already on our listserv, you should join it. That is where we communicate about these webinars throughout the year. That's where we communicate about when registrations open. That's where we'll communicate about uh, call for papers for 2019. I also encourage you to join our Facebook group as Lori, Lori provided that real quick. But all of the information for all of these items, our Twitter account, our Slack channel, and using our hashtag for the conference, are on this website, um, this bit.ly uh, sigux underscore connect. So I encourage you to join all, join as many of those things as you, you can so that you can stay in touch. We promote different things on different sites. So our Facebook page is real short and quick communications. Our listserv is more of the formal announcements. Sometimes we promote them on both. Um, and so it's just a, it's a, they're all a great place to keep in touch. The other nice thing about the listserv is it's a two way communication. It's not just for us to promote to you. You can also write to the listserv and ask questions about services you're interested in looking at or how who's using this vendor or what are you using for this um, uh, service. 
and people will answer you. That's the nice thing about this listserv. It's got tons and tons of people from across the, the, the uh, United States on it who are all who, who are either going to the conference this year or who have been in the past. Um, we have retired CIOs still on the list and they will still answer people. Um, it's, it's really, it's a great big happy family. So it's, I encourage you to join and um, start watching the list and seeing what kind of questions come up. Um, but it's also our way to get information to you. Uh, so now I'm gonna turn it over to Robert and he'll do the rest of this. All right. Um, yep, so uh, one of the, the main reasons to come to SIGUX is to uh, meet people and meet people who are um, doing the same sorts of jobs or having the same sorts of uh, issues that you're trying to solve at your organization. Um, and there are a bunch of different opportunities to do that at the conference. Um, the first one right after our um, in-person newcomers orientation on Sunday, uh, there will be the welcome reception. Um, so you should definitely attend that. That is literally just a, a meet and greet and um, there's some food and drinks there uh, for everybody to uh, mingle and meet each other. Um, you also find uh, a lot of the people from the conference at the breakfast each day. Um, so if there was something you had been discussing or a session you saw the day before that you'd like to talk about, um, they're always willing to continue that conversation during breakfast. Same with lunches. Um, the poster session is one of the um, presentations that's a little bit different than all the others uh, because those you will walk around and you can talk to the poster presenters um, directly uh, as opposed to uh, listening to a whole presentation on it. Um, so that one is a that's a very good session to uh, get very nitty-gritty with uh, questions for people that you might not have time for in some of the other other sessions. Um, there will be several breaks between each of the sessions for refreshments and things. Um, that's another great time to, if uh, you couldn't get your question out to the presenters in their um, presentation time, um, certainly approach them during breaks. They'll be more than happy to uh, talk to you about anything. Um, and then same with the continuing the conversations. Uh, those are happy hours sort of at the end of the at the end of each day. Um, and hopefully some of the presenters from from that day will be attending. Uh, we also have a hospitality suite, um, which there are a bunch of board games at um, that a lot of our uh, attendees enjoy playing. I'm one of them. Um, and then there's also a karaoke machine, uh, which I do not participate in, but is very lively and funny. Um, so if you're into that, definitely stop by the hospitality suite. Um, there's also a morning walk uh, each day that several attendees go on. Um, it's a good way to start the day and um, start your conversations early. Uh, and then also during the uh, dinner on your own sessions, well not sessions, but uh, um, certainly talk to people throughout the day uh, and ask them to go to dinner with you. Um, there are often big groups forming to go go to a restaurant, and uh, we're always happy to discuss our work there as well. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. There we go. Um, so the first one, the welcome reception. This year, um, we're looking for a school item exchange. Um, so if you can bring a coffee mug um, or a pen, a pen, uh, anything with your college's um, name or logo, uh, and then exchange it with someone else and get something from their organization. Um, and uh, that's just a fun exchange to do and um, something to keep everybody connected. Robert, before we move on, are we also encouraging people, I think I saw in Miranda's note, we're encouraging people to wear like a t-shirt or, or apparel from their school as well? Yes, um, uh, at least uh, school colors, if, if not a logo. Um, and that way it uh, 
makes people identifiable. But uh, yep, sorry, I did forget. Right, that. So make sure you make sure you pack your um, University of XYZ T-shirt or polo shirt to wear on Sunday evening. Um, so there are other uh, social events um, that are being planned. Um, they're kind of up in the air as for what night they will be. Um, Lisa, do you know how they're um, where those will be posted once they're decided on? I I believe that they'll either be posted in registration or they'll also be sent out in emails that the conference chair will be sending out. Um, as reminders of things that might be going on. I just know they don't have them all. Um, they don't, we were hoping to have a list of some of them here, but they don't have them all organized yet. So. Yep. Yeah, I know. Uh, so one of them is uh, trying to organize a uh, pub crawl through their, through the monorail system where it'll be a uh, public transportation through each one. Um, they're looking to organize some uh, evening outings to some of the parks. Um, so looking at doing a, a dinner night out at Epcot or something like that. So um, keep your eyes open for um, those events once they get posted. Um, also, if you have any special um, dietary needs since uh, breakfast, lunch, and snack breaks are all provided, um, if you have any needs, let us know and we will and make sure that those accommodations are made for you. Um, I'm not 100% sure who needs to be contacted about that, but uh, if you um, contact Lisa or I, we'll, we'll be happy to get that in the hands of the right person. Um, volunteering, uh, the organization really runs on volunteers. Um, so if you're interested in uh, helping out this year, that would be great. You can ask at the um, registration desk um, and they'll have information for you. Also, um, uh, after this year, uh, we absolutely love for you to volunteer for next year. Um, and uh, you can get that information at the registration desk or um, for any of the other volunteers. Uh, there are tons and tons of things to do. So if there's a particular interest, uh, we'll be able to find something that lines up with it for you. Yeah, I, I just want to point, point out that re the registration desk is um, staffed by volunteers throughout the conference. And it's a great way to meet people who just come up to ask you questions. And you don't necessarily have to know the answer because there's always somebody else you can ask. Um, it's a great way to meet other people that are already working on the conference. It's a great way to meet other attendees at the conference, especially if you're not the type of person who wants to just go up to a group and, and introduce yourself and try to start talking. You now have people coming to you and you could strike up a converse, conversation there. Um, also, usually at each conference, um, there will be a time that's mentioned that's like when the planning for the next year's conference. And if you're interested in volunteering for the next year's conference, you would join that and get your name on a list um, that's also done at the poster session. So the poster session will have um, a section that is the people making up next year's conference, and they will take your name if, and what kinds of jobs you might be interested in helping out with. So helping on the conference can happen while you're at the conference. It can happen before the conference. There are so many jobs um, to do to get ready for a conference, all done by volunteers that every little bit counts. So. Yep, and uh, it, it's a very good experience um, volunteering as well. Um, they, uh, depending on what you're doing, they will set you up with a mentor like uh, Lisa is for me, and she has been very helpful in putting this together with me. And um, definitely uh, volunteer is well worth doing. Um, so the next thing is uh, what to pack. Um, I looked at the weather this week for Orlando, and it is the highs are still in the 90s. Um, I'm not sure what that'll look like at uh, conference time. Um, hopefully, it'll be a, a nice, comfortable temperature. Um, the co 
conference rooms are hit or miss. Uh, sometimes they can be very cold. Sometimes they can be warm. Um, so definitely think about bringing uh, layers, and that way you can uh, make sure that you'll be comfortable during the presentations. Um, the uh, conference itself is business casual dress. Um, that's about it. Yeah, and, and I mean, so by business casual, that's pretty flexible too, right, Robert? It's not, I mean, jeans are fine. If you're comfortable yep. wearing shorts in an air-conditioned conference room, that's fine. Um, don't think you have to wear a suit and be all dressed up. You you're, don't dress to impress. Come with, come with your mind. <laughs> yep, I, I wear uh, jeans and um, a collared shirt is, is my general outfit for, for the conference. Okay, there you go. Um, so there are a lot of transportation options for Disney. Um, there's the Magical Express um, and Uber and Mears Transportation. The Magical Express, um, there was an email that I believe went out two days ago that uh, detailed um, there's a number that you have to call um, to set up transportation directly to Coronado Springs. Um, but then there is a uh, uh, transit system um, through mirrors that'll get you there as well. Um, then once we're on the Disney property, um, they have shuttles to all of their uh, properties. Um, so you'll be able to ask for that at the main desk. Um, and then there's one large stop. Um, and, uh, I'm sorry, Lisa, do you know where the El Centro building is? I assume that's part of Coronado Springs, because but I've never been to Coronado Springs, so I don't know. Yeah, I I believe that that is like the main registration desk for the hotel. Um, so uh, that's where we'll be able to pick up uh, most of that transportation. So for those uh, social events that are heading to Disney properties, like the Epcot dinner or anything. Um, We'll be able to catch that there. Um, Byron says that El Centro is the main check-in building at the resort. Okay. He also had a question about meals. Can you clarify which lunches are covered? Because I believe we're not covered for every lunch. I believe it is just the, the same day as the poster session. I believe it's just Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay. So my, I believe it's just Tuesday. And that's, and I don't know what kind of lunch. I don't know if it's a plated or a, a buffet or what, but it's it's usually a decent lunch. Mm -hmm. um, let's just verify. Yeah, I thought it was a Monday and Tuesday. I thought Wednesday. Oh. Monday. Was the day that it wasn't lunch. provided. Monday is lunch on your own. Okay. Tuesday is a buffet lunch. I'm looking at the scheduling thing right now. And Wednesday is lunch on your own. So just one, every every morning breakfast is provided. And there are always in between session breaks where there will be some kind of snack. But the only day that lunch is provided is Tuesday. Is that, help? Is that good? Thank you. You're welcome. I think we're almost, I think it's our last slide, Robert. <laughs> All right. Um, yep. So uh, one of the very first things that we we have on Sunday at 5:30, we'll have a in-person uh, newcomer session. Um, so Lisa and I will be hosting, um, and that'll be at 5:30 in Fiesta Rooms One and Two. Um, and we'll go right from there to the uh, welcome reception. Um, it will be going over some of the same information, um, but uh, we'll be doing an activity as well to um, get to know each other and find out what sort of uh, colleges and universities we work at. Um, so please attend that one, um, and we look forward to seeing you at the conference. Yeah, we, we do promise that while we may repeat some of the information, there will be, well, for one, you'll get to see us in person. Um, <laughs> Uh, try to have some of the core conference committee there so that you can see some of the people who've been running the conference. We'll try to have some of our board members there so you can see um, who oversees the organization. 
Um, and um, we'll cover a couple other things. Um, and like I said, we'll have we're planning a semi fun activity that doesn't make you be too social. So I hope that encourages you, you to come. <laughs> require you to do anything silly. That's I think the point, right, Robert? Yep, absolutely. So yep, you we, don't have to we have a you. comment from Ruben who says, by the way, the Shed app is quite handy. So I'm ni it's nice to see that somebody is already using it. That's fantastic. Yep, um, I found it very, very handy the last two years that I was there as well. Um, just being able to look at the um, uh, all of the events that I had marked that I wanted to see and not have to filter through everything at each um, at each time slot was was helpful for deciding what I want, wanted to attend. Uh, were there any other questions? Another shout out for the SCED app. That's nice. We should share those with Melissa, who's done a lot of work to get that together. Well, that is, that is all we have. This is not a long webinar, so it's really just if anyone has any other questions or otherwise, that is, that is your orientation to the conference. We're looking forward to meeting all of you on Sunday, October 7th. Well, thank you, Robert and Lisa, for this informative bit of information. We will um, be sharing this recording on YouTube on Monday.